Joanna Derny Sub on Instagram and now YouTube. And um, I wanted to share with you today my process for creating an abstract acrylic painting. Um, I'll be working on a canvas that's 30 by 30 centimeters and you'll see my process um, step by step. So um, sit back, uh, relax and enjoy and hopefully you'll pick up some tips and inspiration. To create the texture on the canvas, I'm using multi-purpose filler, which I got from the hardware shop. I have also used in the past something called tile adhesive for um, putting tiles on in, in bathrooms and kitchens. They both work in a similar way. Um, they'll harden after about an, uh, a day, so I let them dry you know, overnight. And then um, you get a nice um, textured finish that you can paint on. You can um, use watery stains and glazes on them, which just gives them almost like a fresco effect. Um, yeah, and I quite like the um, the un uneven surface and the the way it um, breaks up the paint as you're putting it on with a brush. You'll see what I mean later on. But as you can see here, I'm just making sure I'm, I'm putting it on fairly thickly and I'm spreading it around the canvas, trying to get into all the different corners. Um, yeah, right at the edges as well. And then um, sometimes turn the canvas around just so I can get to the different sections. Here I am using some charcoal to make marks on the canvas. I'm just um, going in ran quite randomly. I don't have any particular design or um, image in mind. I'm just trying to um, cover different parts of the canvas, um, create some darker areas, some movement, some lines that connecting uh, the shapes and uh, just having fun really. You'll notice I'm um, using, holding the charcoal uh, sort of at the end of the stick so that I, and keeping my wrist really loose and turning my hand around different directions, just trying to get um, a variety of marks and lines, keeping loose. Now I'm using some medium, in this case spreader medium, but I think gel medium would do a similar thing if you have some of that. And I'm going to, I'm getting a brush and I'm going to um, use the medium over the charcoal marks. And the purpose of this is to partly um, smudge the marks, but also seal them in to a certain extent so that layers that come after this won't um, interfere too much with the lines. You'll still get the lines showing through. And um, I'm running out of this particular medium, but I've got a little bit left, so I've turned the bottle upside down and I'm just um, squeezing a little bit out here and there over the canvas and then I'll brush it on. Thank you. 
as I'm brushing it on the medium um, I'm I'm emphasizing certain lines um, making the dark areas darker um, just yeah extending the 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 smudginess if you like into different areas of the canvas spreading it around making sure it's all sort of sealed in with the medium and then I just rinsed the brush off and I'm wiping it with a rag that I've got hanging up below the canvas on the easel um, next I'll get the hairdryer just to dry that off so I can keep working on the canvas So what I'm putting on now is some acrylic paint, uh, the red ochre. This colour I consider to be a bit of a background colour. Um, it doesn't always show through it in the end result. Sometimes you'll see a little bit of it poking through. Um, but it has a nice, uh, gives a nice warm feel to the painting. And it's uh, a nice, almost neutral colour that, uh, but it's a warm neutral that um, other colours sort of Bounce off nicely. Um, yeah, I've, I've sort of developed a palette that I use, um, and this, and, and a process, and I often use the ochre as one of the, the background colours. Um, I also use, you'll see it later on, I use white, black, turquoise, um, and then sometimes introduce some uh, oranges as well. So overall this painting will have a majority of warm colours with the ochre, um, the pink and the orange and then there'll be an accent of a cool colour which is the turquoise. I'm putting a little bit of that turquoise on now. Some of that will show through, some of that will be covered up. You'll see I'm holding the brush towards the end of the handle. That gives me a bit of a looser way of applying the paint. I also often tend to do a bit of scrubbing backwards and forwards as you see um, that kind of motion. It gives me a bit of control over where uh, how much paint is going on. So I like to put the you know a bit of a glaze on it. it what I'm what I'm doing now is is with a little bit of extra sort of water um, on the brush. It enables me to spread the paint around in a way um, glaze and mix in with the colours that are already on the canvas that haven't quite dried. I don't mind that sort of smudgy effect. I quite like the sort of hazy edges as well that contrast with the charcoal lines and the dark areas of colour in other areas. This brush um, that I have now, um, I'm going to put some white on, is more of a rounded shape. You'll see the edges have been sort of worn down a bit, but I don't mind that. I quite like the, the softer edge of this brush and um, I use gesso instead of white paint usually uh, it is more economical but also it um, comes in nice big buckets and uh, it gives me um, the ability to um, cover up different areas of the canvas like I'm doing now so covering up some of the lines some of the color that's already down there trying to bring up the amount of light values in the canvas. Uh, what I'm aiming for with this canvas is to have majority lighter and medium value tones uh, with a smaller amount of darker tones. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm aiming for here.
here you'll see I'm adding lines with the brush um, of the white um, just quite randomly but also feeling my way to create different sort of um, line shapes if that makes sense um, that balance the other lines that are already there the other dark lines so I like to have a bit of a sort of positive negative dark light um, balance going on on the canvas. Here you see me turning the canvas around 90 degrees. This gives me a different perspective on the composition and gives me um, a fresh view on what's happening on the canvas. Here I'm going to take a bit of neon pink acrylic paint, um, which gives a bit of a lift to the, to the colors and the, of the painting. And uh, just spreading it around in different areas of the canvas that um, feel like um, it's a, it's almost an intuition I guess I, f I feel that this is where the, the pink will go or needs to go um, it's difficult to explain how I know where to put it it's um, sometimes it's yeah where the other warm colors are sometimes it's um, I need to balance a big area of colour with a small area of colour in another corner. Those kind of things are going on in my mind as I'm doing this. I'm just um, making sure I clean off the brush between each different colour uh, on paint. That way I try and keep my colours a bit fresher, even though I'm mixing them on the canvas. I um, prefer not to get the brush too dirty as I'm using it. And here I'm just taking a, de a damp cloth, um, just a sponge cloth, and wiping back some of the paint that I've just applied. The neon pink is very strong, and uh, in some areas I feel like it doesn't need to be that strong, so I'm just going around the edges of the paint and, and lifting some of it off. Here I'm going in with black acrylic paint, just darkening some of those areas that are, um, that I put the charcoal down on and uh, adding a few more points of dark around the canvas just to balance it all. I've just wet the brush and I'm going in around the edges of the dark paint that I've just put down just to soften them and spread the a bit of a glaze um, 
in different areas of the canvas. After standing back and looking at the canvas, I've decided it needs a bit more of the white. So I'm coming back in with the uh, gesso and uh, just adding adding some more white to different areas there, strength, strengthening some of the white shapes. And adding some white marks here and there over the canvas. Now I'm going to go in with some soft pastel. This is a dark orange. Um, just making lines across the canvas quite loosely, but in a way that either reinforces the warm color there or contrast to the neutral colors underneath. So I've just put on the light orange, you'll see, um, I've just put that down on the canvas and now I'm going to fix the pastel with a fixative spray just so it doesn't smudge as I keep painting. After leaving that fixative to dry um, I've, and stepping back for a little while, I've turned the canvas around again and I'm coming back in with a bit more of the dark the black acrylic just to strengthen up those dark areas You might have noticed I've turned the background painting around. I felt it was a little bit um, distracting for the viewers and apologize for that. Um, but it's another painting I've done in a similar um, style with a similar process. And now I'm coming back in with the white again, just um, strengthening up those white areas again. I'm looking for a focus area, which is in the top right corner now, uh, where the contrast should be greatest between the white and the dark, the light and the darks. So um, yeah, that's what I'm doing here. I'm stepping back all the time now. This is more sort of the time, um, the stage during the painting where I'm assessing and refining and either pushing back areas. So making sure they're not as dark or making them darker where they're needed. As I've decided the top right corner is the sort of main focus, I'm pushing back 
the darkness of the left hand corner so adding that white and making that dark shape smaller Now I'm coming in with a grey pastel chalk um, just to add more of a mid-tone grey to that area down in the left hand corner um, and in other areas of the canvas. Wherever I put a colour down I like to spread it around in different areas of the canvas. Then I'll come back in with a paper towel in a minute and um, smudge some of that pastel so it sort of blends into the canvas and then I'll spray it again to fix it. Gives a lovely soft edge when you use uh, when you smudge the pastels. Now I'm coming in with an acrylic Posca pen in a pale orange. This is going to give me some small dots that will contrast against the loose, messy mark making on the other parts of the canvas. I like to do this as a finishing touch often. I'll either use a pen or I might use some drips of paint. Um, yeah, in this case, the paint's not coming out of the pen but um, it after a few goes it comes out and I I put a few dots in different areas of the canvas they're almost like little hidden secrets because you wouldn't see them unless you were really up close and, and really observing but it's a it's a little tiny touch finishing touch that I like to do to some of my canvases Now I'm putting some final touches of the turquoise and just smudging them in um, with a paper towel and then I'm doing a few final touches of charcoal, also smudging those. Then I'll spray with the fixative and that will be the almost final canvas. I do come back in a bit with uh, a bit more white as well.